Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm here to talk about the upcoming full moon in Taurus. Now, if you are new to my channel, I'm a galactic and an intuitive astrologer. And what I try and do with all of my content is to weave the more traditional astrological alignments and energies and bring in some of the fixed stars and cosmic sort of influences alongside um messages and symbolism and impressions that I'm receiving at a more intuitive level. So we have got um, this really beautiful super moon taking place on the 15th of November. Now it's in the evening in the UK, 9.28 p.m. And the sun is opposing the moon. So we're on the axis of Scorpio and Taurus with the moon being at 24 degrees exactly of Taurus, opposing the sun at the same degree over in Scorpio. So there is as always quite a lot to share with the chart. So I'll talk you through some of the um, things that I'm seeing, some of the insights I've been getting when I've been tuning into this full moon. But before we sort of go into looking at the chart specifically you know just to kind of do a quick recap of what the Taurus energy means now we are dealing with the energy of a full moon first and foremost so with every full moon it marks the end of a cycle we are culminating we are completing we are coming to the end of the lunar cycle the moon has made her way throughout the zodiac and you know she is about to experience a reset so you know we have this very strong energy of letting go of shedding of release and we, we also have because the the moon sorry is being illuminated in its complete and utter fullness we have this sense of wholeness as well so you know we've got as far as we can go with this lunar cycle we're about to step into something new but before that you know we need to take Take this moment to really sit with the energy of the Taurus full moon and you know for me Taurus which is fixed earth it's the second sign of the zodiac so you know we're still very much um you know at the beginning of the journey of the zodiacal journey um Taurus is not in a rush so this is very slow steady deliberate energy very practical very methodical you know again you know this is about building something and Taurus isn't in a rush so you know Taurus is more than happy to put the work in to get things done properly you know not cutting corners not rushing ahead almost enjoying the moment, enjoying the journey, languishing in the sort of the energy that comes through this beautiful creation that, you know, Taurus brings. So we're working very much with the energy of stability, of security. You know, what do you need in your life to feel safe and secure? And of course, you know, when we're working with Taurus, which rules the second house tradition in astrology, you know, this is very much about our resources and what we need to live a comfortable, safe, happy and healthy life. So, you know, Taurus does rule the financial systems. It does rule our resources. So our food supply, our energy supply, but also our internal resources, you know, so, you know, we're talking about resilience. We're talking about, um, you know, patience and um, sort of all our practical skills as well and our creative skills and we're also when we're working with Taurus we are very much thinking about attachment because when we're working with Taurus you know we can be attached to certain things you know and with that comes through the notion of value you know what do we value what is important what matters in life so again you know Taurus wants to strip everything back as well to basically experience life in a more simplistic way so you know again that can affect what we value as well because I think when we really strip everything back you know it starts to make us realize what it is that is important in life what really matters and I keep saying the word matter because of course matter is linked to the physical body to the physical matter you know and in Taurus we are very much invited to experience our world through our physical matter 
through our physical body, through our senses. You know, this is a very sensual sign. This is a very um, sign that, you know, needs touch, needs things to be tangible, needs things to feel real. So again, you know, um, and, you know, if you've ever been in a state where, you know, you're feeling very highly anxious or you're feeling very overwhelmed, a really good technique, and you know, I've heard a lot of people sort of share this, is to come back to your senses and really focus on what you can see, what you can hear, what you can smell, what you can taste, what you can touch, because that brings you back into the present moment. So again, you know, with this full moon, there is a really strong sense of, you know, coming back into the body, becoming fully grounded, connected to earth, fully embodied and able to connect to your sensual experience of all that is going on around you to bring back, bring yourself back to that very simplistic, very present state of being, state of mind and state of body. So you know, this really is bringing us back to the importance of our body and also the consciousness that we carry within our body and the wisdom of our body all through this beautiful Taurus full moon. So, you know, again, we're reminded, you know, I just want to reiterate this whole idea of patience, you know, with Taurus, everything does take time it takes a lot of patience yeah and you know i think it's fair to say that for many of us uh, most almost everybody watching this kind of content is going to probably feel like we've been waiting such a long time for you know this higher energy to come in for this great awakening for our consciousness to, to increase for the light to break through and for you know all the darker energies to fall away you know this whole period of this, this whole journey of ascension and great awakening it does feel like it has been a long time coming now i'm not suggesting that it's all going to happen on friday wouldn't that be quite remarkable if it did but you know again this is another big sort of step in the whole process in the path on the journey so you know we're also working with the energy of venus because venus is taurus's ruling planet she rules um taurus and libra but you know she is very active and she's very strong so you know this is a really deeply divine feminine chart it's a very divine feminine energy coming through and Taurus is also linked to the heart center so again you know this is about being really aware of coming into the body and connecting with that wisdom and that consciousness and all the gold that lies within the body and really being fully fully grounded and that is really important because we have Uranus right next to the full moon at the time of this lunation. So I will share the chart so we can see what is going on. Okay, so just looking at this chart, we can see there is the moon up at 24 degrees exactly of Taurus. You can see the sun in opposition down in Scorpio. And we can see Uranus right next to the moon, obviously also in opposition to the sun. So the sun is shining a really full light on the moon. You know, we can see the wholeness of the moon. We can also really feel the energies of Uranus at this time. So we've talked about Taurus being this really practical, methodical, reliable, resilient, persistent energy, you know, taking its time really slow and steady, you know, very peaceful as well. I'm not sure I used that word before, but, you know, very peaceful, you know, very happy just to kind of keep going, wants to build, wants to create something tangible, very linked to the material world. And then we have Uranus. Now, Uranus is almost as far in opposition to those energies as you could possibly get. Uranus is the planet of awakening. This is Uranian energy, very strongly linked to Aquarius because Aquarius is Uran Uranus's ruling sign. Now, obviously, you know, we'll talk about Aquarius in a minute when we get around to talking about Pluto. But, you know, Uranian energy is very much about breaking through. 
this is curveball energy. This is really, you know, you have to expect the unexpected. There are shocks, there are surprises, there are breakthroughs, really strong awakening consciousness, higher consciousness, things coming from left field that you really did not see coming, you know, curveball, curveball, sorry, timeline shifts, but also, you know, with that Uranian sort of influence, you know, this is very much about electrical energy. So, you know, it would not surprise me at all if we have even stronger solar activity this week in the lead up to and over the period of this full moon because of the strong influence of Uranus. You know, and this is potentially, you know, again, we don't know how this is going to play out. We don't know how it's going to manifest. It could be affecting you at very personal level in your own sort of immediate immediate environment. It could be something that happens at the collective, but really, you know, we are working with very unpredictable, very unstable energy, which, you know, because Uranus is one of the outer planets, it's a much stronger energy. So it is definitely going to be influencing this full moon. Now, you know, Taurus as fixed earth is very linked to Gaia, to nature, to our physical experience, our physical expression, you know, our bodies, our earth, the planet that we're actually living in and on, you know, the ground beneath our feet. So, you know, again, there's so many different ways that this energy can play out. But for me, you know, and I know I've read and heard other people saying it, it does feel like there could be quite a dramatic and very sudden and potentially unexpected, although not unexpected if you've been following this path for a long time, but something happens to really jolt people awake. Now, this could be something that comes out in the news or something that, you know, it comes out on the public, the world stage potentially, but it could also be you know a big sort of upshift in the energy coming in the solar energy the light codes the flares you know something that comes in and literally boom like a lightning bolt you know almost takes us to a new level of awakening a new level of understanding so you know it feels very exciting it feels very electrifying you know but it is you know, just be mindful that it is potentially going to be quite hard on our nervous systems. If you're a sensitive, you know, if you're really sort of um, in tune with these sort of wider, broader, more galactic energies, more cosmic energies, then, you know, it it could be, um, you know, it, it may feel overwhelming. So this is why it's so important to really harness the energy of the Taurus full moon to really be fully grounded and I'm getting this sort of impression that it's really crucial at this time that all the light workers all the energy workers all those people who are awake and aware of something you know happening at a bigger broader wider level that it's really important that we are fully in our bodies almost as if you know whatever is happening energetically around the time of this full moon we need to be fully in we need to be fully locked into our bodies and um, so that, you know, if there is a shift, we are there carrying that energy, holding that frequency in. You know, I was shown in a meditation years ago um, that of, of the, the globe, you know, the earth, it was shown to me, um, you know, as the pictures portray it, this, this round globe, but all over the globe, there were diodes sort of stuck into the earth coming out and they were all lit up. And I was shown at that point that I was one of those diode, diodes, that I was a conductor of the energy and that it was really important, you know, that I was here at this time to facilitate and to support this process. But I it wasn't just me. There were so many other diodes all across the world, all, you know, in the, exactly the right location, the right time, the right place in order to sort of serve in this way. And, you know, for me at the time, and we are talking years ago, really before I was fully awake to what was going on, it felt so comforting because I had asked, what is my purpose at that point? And, you know, to be shown such a strong visual image was really um well it, it was yeah it was a relief to me a um it was a relief to be able to sh sort of see that and understand that and you know the time you know I've been looking for you know what am I going to do how do I help how do I serve how do I heal and it was like you know it's just enough to be here doing just being 
physically embodied at this time. And it, I keep getting reminded of that visual, you know, that we're all here, we're all strategically placed and we, we all have to be fully embodied for this energy, whatever it is to really, you know, to have full effect, full impact. And of course, you know, we've been told for what feels like eons of time, you know, that we are here to lead the way, we're here to hold the space for those people that perhaps aren't as aware of what is going on. You know, so if the energies do increase and there is overwhelm and there is sort of an assault on our nervous system, it's really important to be fully grounded and fully in in order to be able to process that and navigate that. So that is a really strong message that has come through. Now, if we look at the rest of this chart, there is obviously quite a lot to say. Um, you know, we have the moon at 24 is in a trine to Pluto at 29 Capricorn. Now, obviously, you know, shortly after this full moon, and we're talking a matter of days, it's either the 19th or the 20th of November, depending where you are in the world, Pluto is going to step out of Capricorn and into Aquarius. We've been talking about this ad infinitum as well, but this is a really big shift because Pluto will not be returning to Capricorn for the foreseeable future, certainly in all of our lifetime. So, you know, this is a really big deal. And the fact that it is coming so closely after this full moon in Taurus, which during which Uranus is really active. And of course, you know, Pluto is about to move into Uranus's home sign, ruling sign. So, you know, and, you know, with this trine, Uranus is also next to the moon is also in trying to Pluto you know this is really strengthening the impact and the influence of both of these outer planets so with Pluto involved you know this is about evolution this is about soul growth this is about deep permanent change that is designed to help us evolve to the next level because we're working with earth energy these are deep and permanent lasting changes that are going to affect us in a very physical, very tangible, very real way. So again, you know, just to be mindful that because we're dealing with such strong earth at this time, you know, being fully embodied, being fully connected is absolutely critical. So, you know, we are and we we are absolutely going to be feeling it. So having all these tools and techniques to help you regulate your nervous system, regulate your physical body, regulate your emotions is going to be really, really helpful. Um, so we also have obviously over here in the middle. Um, so sextile the moon and Uranus and sextile Pluto, we have um, we have Neptune. Now, Neptune is still in retrograde motion, as is Uranus. I should have pointed that out as well earlier. And, you know, Neptune is at the top of this grand minor trine, sort of holding the space um, in certain ways um, for us, you know, trining the sun as well. Obviously, both sun and Neptune are in water sign. So, you know, this is bringing in a much more ethereal and much more dreamy and um, a much more spiritual sort of element and essence into this full moon chart. And, you know, just sort of reminding us that, you know, if we turn to our higher selves, to our spiritual sort of um, inner guidance, then you know, we we have that holding us, showing us the way. So we have these beautiful, ethereal, psychic, visionary um, energies, you know, being held in place by the two um, Earth signs, Taurus and Pluto. So giving a really sort of grounded base for us in, able to, in order to be able to rise into sort of this higher and um, more unified consciousness, um, very much about surrendering to unity, to all that is, to our spiritual nature, to our spiritual expression. And, you know, again, I should have probably said earlier that because the sun and the moon are in at 24 degrees, this is the third deacon of their respective signs. You know, there's a lot of planets at the third, within the third deacon in this chart. So again, this is very much about the spiritual expression of these planets and these zodiacal signs. 
Now, Neptune is also about vision and being able to bring a vision of what is possible through and with the beautiful Earth sort of forming the base and, um, you know, either side of the base of the triangle here. Again, this is about being able to ground in earth in and embody in a new vision, a higher vision. Now, the same day as this full moon prior to the full, the full moon. So um, as we can see, Saturn is now stationary um, direct. Now, Saturn moves stations direct a few hours before this full moon. And um, so, you know, and this is a big deal in itself. This is, you know, Saturn, which is all about sort of, you know, wisdom, maturity, mastery, you know, father time, sort of the grown up version of ourselves, if you will, you know, now moving direct, ready to go, ready to take charge, but very much bringing us back to this idea of our spiritual mastery, of giving us, you know, a, a need to really focus on our spiritual selves, our spiritual expression. You know, if we have felt held back or restricted or that, you know, there's been a pause in any way while Saturn has been retrograde and we've had to really come within, now as Saturn gets ready to move direct and to really, you know, get moving in a forward motion once more, this is about those obstacles, those barriers being removed. And because we're dealing with Piscean energy, you know, this is very karmic. It's the last sign of the Zodiac. But it's also when we're working with Pisces, you know, things can literally dissolve. They can fall away. And this is about really surrendering to this higher spiritual wisdom, this higher spiritual mastery, you know, that is leading us into a more way, a more unified way level of consciousness. So, you know, as you know, we have been, we're still in Scorpio season, the sun is still sort of, you know, digging things up so that they can be seen. But as things come to the surface, Saturn now moving forward is going to be able to just dissolve them. And of course, we've got the beautiful support of Neptune to help us do that as well. So, you know, this is a really powerful time, you know, in terms of all the different energies that are taking place. Now, Saturn in at 12 degrees of Pisces is squaring Sagittarius at six sorry squaring Mercury at 16 degrees of Sagittarius so there is tension here but there is also huge amounts of growth through the sort of the higher um level of consciousness that Mercury is able to access through Sagittarius being able to see the bigger picture being able to lift ourselves up out of the sort of the lower 3D um, energies that may have felt, you know, like they almost had us um, stuck, that almost overwhelming, maybe even feeling that we have been buried, you know, unable to rise up and see what is going on from a higher perspective. But no, we've got Mercury squaring Saturn here. And also we have Mercury in a sextile to this um to this asteroid Atlantis. Now, uh, asteroid Atlantis has been coming up a lot for me lately. And, you know, and this is quite a tight sex style. So I will talk about Atlantis again in a minute, but certainly for me, it feels as if, you know, this Atlantean energy, this archetype, all the sort of the symbolism of Atlantis is very much playing a part at the time of this full moon. And we are being given access to information understanding that is coming through and of course with Atlantis at 15 degrees of Libra it is Quincunx Saturn at 12 degrees of Pisces so you know there is this real sort of tense and um, discordant energy between the two but you can't avoid it you know something is coming through that has to be seen, it has to be understood, it has to be worked through. And perhaps, you know, Saturn wants to take a more um, sort of, you know, come into more unity consciousness, consciousness, but also have compassion for a lot of what happened, you know, that is linked to our Atlantean karma that we are very much 
here to clear at this time. So with Atlantis in Libra, you know, this is about bringing peace, balance and harmony back to, you know, so many of these and um, these locked in energies that are coming out to be relived, to be expressed, to be seen, to be felt and to be transmuted. But Saturn wants to just take it almost higher, you know, so that we're getting the wisdom of and the benefit of Saturn's mastery, but we're also able to surrender and to let go and to allow it all to be dissolved. So, you know, beautifully, beautifully um, set up here in this full moon chart. Now we also have, what else? Because there's always a million, million things to say. And I haven't even talked about the galactic energies yet. We've got Venus, which is obviously the chart ruling or the moon's ruling planet at this time. Where is Venus hiding? She is here at four degrees of Capricorn and Venus is in a square to the nodal axis. So the nodes are now at five degrees of Libra and Aries respectively. And so Venus is in a T-square with the nodes. So, you know, Venus in Capricorn is really sort of helping us to ground as well, to really appreciate, you know, to value what has taken or what feels like it's taken such a long time. You know, when you're working with Capricorn, there is a slow but steady climb. And I always think of Capricorn as one of the archetypes of ascension, because this is about sort of maybe standing at the bottom of the mountain, looking up, knowing that you need to get to the top, not being able to see what it looks like, but having the trust and the faith, the tenacity, the resilience, the perseverance, the drive, you know, all of those energies to be able to take that step to climb that mountain to keep going even when the terrain feels really challenging you feel out of your depth you don't really know where you're going you just know that you have to keep going and you have to get to the top so Capricorn for me is very much about that symbolism that ethos and you know this is also about um you know Capricorn being the um the energy of mastery you know being at the top of the chart you know this is when you kind of almost made it it's a very link to success but it's also for me sort of the bridge between our physical physical expression and experience and the higher energies of our more spiritual selves of our um higher self of you know what lies beyond us you know that sort of soul essence so again you know to have venus in the sign at this time is really really interesting and it's really really powerful and then squaring the nodes which is our soul's growth our soul's evolution what we're letting go of in libra and what we're stepping forward into in terms of the Aries energy this is pioneering this is taking us into you know worlds realms realities dimensions that we haven't necessarily been to before certainly not um in our lifetime you know so again taking us forward and letting us take responsibility for ourselves as well and really come into a much stronger sense of who we are stronger sense of self and stronger sense of identity so you know that is a really sort of very strong catalytic energy that is forcing change but again always for the better we have the ongoing sextile between jupiter at 19 chiron at 19 i've talked about that in the last couple of videos but again you know for me this is about deep healing of the wound of identity of not knowing who we are not knowing how powerful we are where we've come from what our roots are you know and you know getting the sort of the benefit of this excess this extra new information coming through Jupiter in Gemini expanding our understanding in order to help us heal that wound so again that is ongoing but it's really beautiful to have it here at the time of the full moon and then down here there's some really interesting things going on so these are we've got um homia at two degrees of scorpio we have got black moon lilith at zero degrees of scorpio and we've got this um little um asteroid the sphinx at zero 29 degrees 50 minutes of libra so these three are sitting very close together talking to each other helping each other and probably egging each other on a little bit as well i would say so 
with the Sphinx, um, you know, this is very much linked to ancient Egypt, but this is about riddles. This is about deep secret information that, you know, is very sacred. It's very divine. And it's only really you know, accessible to people of a certain standing in life, I guess, or a certain consciousness, a certain level of understanding. So, you know, to have it here next to Black Moon Lilith, who is the deep feminine, that deep feminine wisdom, but the shadow, the feminine power that has been repressed, that has been suppressed, that has been sort of locked down you know sat upon put upon for eons you know again for her to come into Scorpio which is you know a real sort of sign of secrets of you know all that is hidden but deeply transformational deeply sort of healing energy and very empowering all about control and exchange very passionate energy but very emotional as well you know the still waters running very deep with Scorpio to have Lilith here at that zero degrees that crisis degree that degree of full pure potential you know again next to Hermia who is the goddess of um, rebirth and she is very much you know helping us to reconnect to nature which of course is very strongly coming through the Taurian signature she wants to help us really remember you know the importance of the natural cycle of our life, the consciousness that we hold within our bodies, the power that we have to bring something new into creation, very much about rebirth, how we are all connected to one another, to Gaia, to Earth. Yeah. And then we have um, and Black Moon Lilith, you know, here she is very much about purging the, the old, you know, revealing what has been hidden, where we've been repressed, where we have been a slave to old paradigms, old agendas, things lying in the shadows, keeping us hidden, keeping us locked in, keeping us limited and restricted. You know, again, you know, this is like, <laughs> it's just such a beautiful combination of the energies. And then the Sphinx, you know, ready to unveil the information at the perfect divine time. Well, is this the perfect divine time? Because, you know, not only is the Sphinx here next to Black Moon Lilith, who's all about, you know, shining light in the shadows, and Hermia, who is about bringing about this new level of consciousness through our connection to nature and our bodies. But we've got this square <laughs> to Pluto, and Pluto wants to unearth and reveal, and Pluto is in those final few minutes of Capricorn. Now, it could not be more powerful and profound and obvious. So, you know, this is where this kind of Uranian, like, thunderbolt, woo, an unexpected energy starts to make more sense because you know you've also got the swing the sphinx is in this quincunx to the moon and to sedna and to uranus so of course you know sedna is about deep transformation going to the depths to experience a completely new version of self a new understanding and having to adapt to the new ways the new environment she finds herself in following a deep betrayal of the patriarchal system so it's like gosh wow <laughs> there's just it, yeah it's um it's like, wow. And then, you know, in the background, we've still got Pluto opposing Mars. Mars has jumped ahead in the early degrees of Leo, but that is still active. And we still have Mercury opposing Jupiter. Again, you know, we've talked about the, these oppositions, but, you know, this is really powerful, powerful stuff. So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to talk about um, some of the galactic energies, because not only is this a powerful chart from a traditional point of view, but we also have, you know, some really powerful galactic and cosmic energies coming through. So we've talked about the Sphinx and the importance and significance of the Sphinx being square Pluto. Pluto really wants us to evolve and to be able to let go and shed and purge what no longer is in um is in resonance or is for our greatest and highest good and we've got so much support in order to be able to do that but when we're looking at some of the fixed stars there is the most beautiful star and um, named Hadar or Beta Centauri in the Centaurus constellation and this is conjunct the sun 
in Scorpio. So, you know, this beautiful energy of Hadar is being lit up by the sun and is projecting on to the full moon in Taurus and Uranus in opposition. So, you know, absolutely stunning um, energy to be working with because the archetype of Hadar is very much linked to unconditional love. This is about being breathing, living, knowing nothing but unconditional love and the frequency of that, loving all that is, all of your body, all of your surroundings, all of the people within your circle and further afield, all living beings, creatures, fauna, flora, everything is connected when we're working with Hadar and the energy of Hadar. And, you know, this in itself just requires us to be able to come into the state of love for each other, for ourselves, to work in collaboration, to cohabit in peace, in harmony, to have respect for every other living being, which instantly takes us out of that conflict energy, of that fear frequency, you know, where everything, I mean, it does sound idyllic. It seems, you know, it sounds perfect. It sounds like how could it possibly even exist? But this is the frequency that we are dealing with. And it is also bringing us very much back to a most beautiful and divine and sacred connection with nature with our own planet with mother earth with Gaia but also as I've said with all other living beings so this is being sort of shone it's being lit up by the sun you know this is an annual transit it is shining full beam straight at the moon and also at Uranus so perhaps you know as Uranus sort of is work working to awaken us to a new level of consciousness he is being really really influenced by Hadar and that frequency of you know what is possible and of course you know we've got Neptune there as well in this trine you know really sort of reminding us you know of this vision of Hadar the vision of what is possible and then we have the beautiful earth energy helping us to ground that in and to embody it so it is stunning to have the impact and the influence and the support of that star at this full moon with everything else going on in the chart, you know, very, um, yeah, just incredible. I just want to draw attention as well. And this is um, a bit I've recorded after and I'm popping back in um, because I forgot to mention Algol. I don't know how, because Algol is like one of the biggest energies in this full moon chart. Um, conjunct the moon and Uranus. So, you know, we've talked about Algol quite extensively this year. Um, Algol is being activated really strongly at this time. And, you know, again, I invite you to go and watch the videos that I shared about Algol and the energy of this fixed star and what it means and all the associations and the symbolism, but just to try and pull out the key things that I think are really pertinent at this time. Algol is in the Perseus constellation. This is very much hero energy, but with Algol specifically, we are very much drawn to the um, myth and the story of Medusa and this whole sort of symbolism of goddess and monster, you know, good and bad, light and evil, shadow and light, you know, and the, um, you know, who is a victim in the situation is, you know, is she a victim or is she a perpetrator? You know, is she evil? Is she good? Was she wronged or is she the villain? You know, there are so many sort of confusing, contrasting um, energies all linked up in this story. It depends, you know, who tells, who tells the tale, which version of the story you are most engaged with, which you most resonate with. And, you know, and we can really see how that is playing out in our society, you know, across the world, you know, in plain sight right now. It has been for, for a very long time, but it has certainly ramped up in November. And, you know, again, this is very much part of this full moon energy. So with Algol, you know, we are reminded that all is not always what it seems. And, you know, you often have to look beyond what you are being shown to get to the truth of a situation. With the fact that Medusa lost her head, you know, they tried to, um, or Perseus tried to disempower her, to take her weapon, her 
snake hair away from her. But in actually, you know, so there is this whole story of losing your head, you know, and again, who is losing their head at this time? You know, are there great sort of leaders and people in high positions in society? Are they toppling? Are they losing their heads either metaphorically or figur figuratively or symbolically? Or are we losing our heads? Are we losing our minds because, you know, of this crazy sort of turn of events, this, you know, potential breakthrough, awakening, you know, crazy, um, unexpected, shocking, um, you know, information and, and whatever is coming to light at this time through Uranus being so close to the moon and in this case to Algol as well. You know, this is about, you know, being able to conquer your fear, to look fear straight in the face, to look at the shadow and in doing so, start to realize actually what you feared perhaps wasn't real, you know, from the beginning. And it was just something designed to keep you in a state of disempowerment, keep you in a state of fear and control. You know, again, you know, this is a time where new new energies are coming to the surface to almost unlock us or to free us from those states where we have been locked in fear frozen in fear which is effectively what Medusa was able to do when you looked straight in her eye you were turned to stone you were frozen in fear and um, never you know but and again you know this is very much um triggering the witch wound and the fear of shining your light of you know so there is very much a sense of you know what we fear most can actually be a trigger to our greatest awakening our greatest liberation our greatest transformation and of course you know with Pluto in a wide trine to Algol the moon Uranus at this time you know this is huge transformation huge soul growth huge evolutionary leaps that we are experiencing you know because you know in myth, in story, in the fairy tales, in the films, you know, we've been taught to fear characters like Medusa. But again, it is, it's having this opportunity to reframe and see, you know, the truth of a story, you know, a truth of how did the monster become the monster? She was ultimately originally a goddess, you know, completely um, full of light and love. And yet she was turned into the monster much in the same way that the divine feminine energies were tampered with were infiltrated were were manipulated were changed you know so again this is about being able to see you know that we are all both monster and goddess good and bad light and dark shadow and light that you know this is about being able to integrate those expressions and those fears that perhaps you know we've been taught to fear or told to fear or you know kept separate so again you know, there's just so much going on with this full moon chart, you know, from the off. And of course, we have the square to Alphard in Hydra constellation, which is all about a Kundalini awakening, you know, awakening that latent dormant energy that lies trapped in the base of our spine, you know, our powerful creative centers, you know, being forced almost through the square to really, um, you know, be accessed, be activated, coming up into more of our heart centre through Alphard, through the heart star, you know, not being influenced by what is going on outside, being able to come within and really connect with who we are and the truth of who we are. And I mean, it is just so beautiful. Well, we also have Mercury's conjunct the great attractor, which is one of the super um, cosmic points. You know, this is... This particular one isn't so much about black hole energy because it is like a cosmic anomaly. They don't really know, experts don't really know how it works, or what's going on, but it is very much linked to truth, to universal knowledge, universal galactic truth. You know, it's very hard to um, hide anything when the great attractor is activated and you can see behind the curtain behind the veil behind the corner behind the mountain if necessary because this particular point bends time so you know if we talked earlier about time shifts you know this is absolutely what is possible when the great attractor is activated and with mercury this is about understanding this is about taking our understanding literally a leap in consciousness you know quantum leap taking it way out you know where we've ever been before and it may just literally plug into place snap into place and suddenly you know we just know so much more than we ever thought we could and it was because of the way you know these um 
planets and cosmic points are working together, it may just feel like the most natural thing, almost like we've always known it, if that makes sense. You know, that is what happens often with the timeline shift. It's like, you know, you just change tracks and you're on a new kind of trajectory, but you almost forget what was happening before because this is where you are now, you know, and if we're still in the present moment, which we, we need to be with this Taurus full moon, still in that state of peace you know that stability that harmony and um, that presence then again you know this is when the energies can do work most effectively if you like and that's what's kind of coming through mercury is off also opposite Rigel and the Orion constellation I've talked about Rigel before it might be worth going back to look at a video I did a few months ago about Orion because I talked about Rigel in that video but this is about sort of moving through confusion, Rigel, you know, very much linked to that polarity, that separation consciousness, but also coming into the Orion light. So blending, pulling to sort of pulling the separation together. So we're much more unified and, you know, the, the, the higher level of consciousness being able to really carry us through any confusion and also you know to have Orion opposite Mercury at this time it's almost like you know there is this guidance this galactic guidance from Orion from what we all experience there being projected on being sort of shone over so that we can take advantage of that and carry that through but you know this is a really powerful alignment for Mercury at this time we also have the south node very close now to the super galactic center and it's not exact yet because the super galactic center is at two degrees of Libra south node is still at five but you know this is again really powerful cosmic energy to be activating this full moon chart and the super galactic center is like a black hole it strips everything away from it towards it you know it's literally a magnetic force huge force you know very hard to kind of understand from our human perspective but it is very much about transmuting pulling away anything that is no longer resonance no longer fit for purpose that does not align with where we are going on our sort of soul's evolution and our trajectory you know bringing in is acts like this huge cosmic mirror as well so that we can really see ourselves and that we can see everything else for what it is you know with this sort of libra energy seeing that you know the other is actually a version of you and therefore you no longer need to stand in conflict or in fear because we are all connected you know these are the kind of spiritual cosmic truths that start to be activated with the super galactic center we also have you know i heard somebody describe it as the cosmic womb so again it's this point of super cosmic divine creation this void this portal where anything is possible anything that perhaps you weren't you know quite aligned with before you know again with this cosmic energy it, it can shift you into a completely different space of understanding and consciousness, which then almost like reset. So, you know, and it also, it creates a void so that you want to reach out and understand more. It stretches as it stretches our understanding. It stretches our need to know who we are, it stretches us to want to know more, to be more, to understand more, you know? So again, you know, it's like a mag, mag, sorry, a magnificent invisible force that you may not really, kind of be able to touch or understand or even sort of you know it's not tangible but it is there and it's non-negotiable so you know drawing us towards this higher level of consciousness you know being able to see things from a much higher different um perspective and helping us to release attachment as well to understand that everything in life as with Hermia you know she reminds us everything is this is this um process this constant death and rebirth releasing rebirth you know shedding rebirth and you know that is part of the process that we have to go through so um we also have i just check what else is going on because there is so much and i don't i don't want to go through the entire chart but we have um mars mars is opposite altair which is in the aquila constellation so you know pluto has been activating altair for some time but with mars here now mars is the warrior aquila altair there is really strong warrior energy but there's also really strong connection to atlantis with this star to courage to being able to fly high to 
have that wisdom, that bravery, to have this shift in perspective, you know, to be able to deal with challenge and have the resilience to be able to face it, you know, and not allow it to sort of get the better of you or to make you back down or to put you, you know, back in a place of where you're not in your own sort of sense of power and sovereignty. So again, with Altair opposing Mars, you know, it's giving us this sort of sense of the spiritual warrior, you know, this courage, determination, resilience that we need to move through, to push through. And of course, Mars in Leo is all about stepping into that heart center, having the courage, shining, being seen, you know, that sovereign, that regal, that royal energy is really, really beautiful. And we also have Saturn in a trine to a crux, which I've talked about in a video recently. Um, again, a crux being the Southern Cross, the sense of being at a crossroads, being able to see all routes, all destinations, all paths, all, all ways, but also that sort of sacrificial energy that does come through with Pisces. You know, it's also a crux being in Scorpio, so trying to Pisces, Saturn Pisces, but, you know, acknowledging that, yes, we have had to sacrifice a lot, you know, but that is part of the plan, that is part of the path, and that there is purpose in the pain, in the challenge, in the strife. And we also have Sirius A in Cancer, also in this grand trine with the crux and Saturn. So, you know, Sirius A being, um, you know, again, spiritual mastery, spiritual wisdom, spiritual warrior energy comes through, but also links to Atlantis and ancient Egypt, which, you know, we've already seen with the Sphinx, with asteroid Atlantis. So again, you know, so much coming up from our ancient earth, past lives, past times, you know, so much has been locked hidden in the earth, hidden within our bodies, cellular memories, cellular trauma, this, you know, the Uranus energy kind of is almost like coming in to unlock that, to almost like, uh, and release it. And we've got all this support with the rest of the chart to help us transmute it in, at so many different junctures. Wherever we look, there's help to release it, to process it, to heal it, to be able to move on, to allow us to move away from what has been hidden in the shadows, you know, what we have kept hidden, what has been repressed, what has been locked in. So much opportunity to shed, to purge, to release, to then be able to grow, to move higher, to ascend. So just, yeah, flipping brilliant. I always want to swear there because I'm just like, wow, <laughs> if there is just so much going on. So I hope you have enjoyed my insights. There's been a few rambles. I think sometimes I do start channeling. Um, but, you know, very much about unlocking that and reconnecting to that feminine wisdom, the wisdom of our bodies, the consciousness within our bodies. Also, you know, the consciousness and wisdom of Gaia and Earth and what she is doing, how she's holding us, how she's moving through this process as well. You know, the ability of the reminder to come back to that state of full presence, of wholeness, of peace through the Taurus, Taurus energy to have patience, to know that, you know, the work has not been in vain, that, you know, we are coming through now. We're literally in this portal, this like birth canal, you know, coming out. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what it's going to be like when we get out, but we know that we are here for that ride. We're here for that experience. And oh my goodness, it has been a long time coming. And, you know, it's been really hard, <laughs> really exhausting. And, you know, there have been sacrifices and, you know, casualties along the way, you know, even in versions of ourselves that we've had to let go of. But, you know, this is, we're here, we're doing the work. And, you know, just days before Pluto makes this math, massive mammoth majestic shift into Aquarius, you know, we are literally, it feels like we're on this precipice of, you know, to, I don't know what, but it feels exciting. So um, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Join my mailing list for my monthly newsletter. And if you're interested in looking at your own chart, you know, I do offer reading. So please get in touch, look at my website, you know, have a look at what may be calling you, what you want to know, what you want to discover at this time. And um, yeah, I, I'm just so grateful, you know, to have people interested in what I've got to share, what's coming through and, you know, on this path with me. So thanks so much.